is a tried and true statement of where this Getting a deposit at 11 o'clock at night, and guess what? Scheduling delivery for the next day, it's happened. The fact that that client was able to transact outside of normal business hours is a tried and true statement of where this business is going. Yeah, we work really hard to make sure that the relationship with the partner is about the numbers and the metrics and the analytics. Our leads went up 30 to 40% over our previous provider, and then when we added the buy now piece, they went up even more after that. So. It's been one thing after the other that's led us to a continued partnership with Carnot. In the entire world, if you get results, you trust the people. That's what it boils down to. And we have great results. Had a 300% increase. Leads, appointments, gross increase, sales. Ever wonder why the best of the best choose Hamlin and Associates? Check this out. My answer to why I do so much business is results. Hamlin and Associates gets me results. We have always used Hamlin and Associates and we've always had great results. When it comes to a company managing your customer information and managing your direct mail for your business, I would definitely pick John Hamlin and Associates. We can have such a high level intelligent conversation with our consumer base and talk to them in real terms that opens so many doors and gives us so many uh, better chances to convert. We're using data technology and communication strategies that our competitors don't even know exist. Are you interested in learning how so many of the largest and most progressive dealers consistently produce incredible results? Give us a call and we'll explain in five minutes or less. Forty-nine percent of dealers say that it takes them eight to sixteen days to get their cars frontline ready. With undefined time frames and limited accountability, it is no wonder dealers struggle to speed up their reconditioning times and rein in their costs. Videoto's reconditioning solution, iRecon, helps you gain control of your reconditioning process and monitor each vehicle's progress so that you can get your cars to the front line where they can be seen and sold faster. iRecon isn't just a company with a light integration into Viato. We are Viato.
I've said it for years, and I'm going to keep right on saying it. In automobile dealerships, managers have the absolute hardest and most complicated job in the dealership. And with it being so hard and so complicated, friends, a lot of mistakes get made. Some of them they realize that they're making, and quite honestly, some managers, they don't even realize they're making these mistakes. So this show is not to bash managers, but on this new episode of The Best Show in Auto, mistakes managers make and how to stop them. Hit that share button for me, baby. Hit that share button and tell everybody, I mean, tell them all that Lopes is live. Now for the hundreds watching live and the millions around the world that wish they could be here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for Live with Lopes. What up guys, it's Gary Vee and it's time to get more Frank. Frank, where are you? What's up, everyone? It's Furlan Arts Subprime Hero, and it's time to get more Frank. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, yes, my friends, my friends, my friends, boys and girls, kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode, a brand new live episode of The Best Show in Auto. Friends, welcome to another episode of Live with Lopes. I hope that you're all doing well. I trust that each and every one of you are doing well, and I am so, so happy and grateful that each and every one of you are here with us right now whether you're watching live or whether you're watching on the replay i am blessed by your presence and i thank you so so much for being here friends i have said it for years like literally for years what i'm about to say right now if you've been following me on social media or if you know me personally you know that i have said this a thousand and three times before managers have the absolute hardest and most complicated job in the dealership said it before and i will absolutely a thousand percent keep saying it because it is 100 percent true managers have the absolute most complicated challenging and hardest job in the dealership and with it being so hard and with it being so complicated they're bound to make some mistakes, okay? It's it's absolutely bound to happen. Some of these mistakes, they don't even realize that they're making. And friends, there are a lot of others that they do realize, but man, sometimes there's some stuff that you just, you just can't do anything about it. Now, this is not in any way, shape or form, this is not a show to bash managers. So if you are here thinking like, oh man, we gonna talk some crap about managers, Move along, son. Move along. That, that, that is not what tonight's show is about. That's not what the meaning of it is. You're looking at the wrong guy for that. There's a lot of guys out there that'll do that. You're looking at the wrong guy right here. Okay, so just move along to something else because on our show this evening, mistakes managers make and how to fix them. Okay, I don't just report the news, my friends. Don't forget, I don't just report the news. I don't look at automotive news or I don't look at wards and go, hey, we can talk about this this week. No, no, no. I bring you the real down to earth, nitty gritty, the actions for you to take so that you can improve your career, improve your performance, fulfill your mission and earn some more commission, baby. That's what it's all about. And that's why we do what we do. Hey, if you're just watching the show for the very, very first time, maybe you hit 
Maybe somebody tagged you in. Maybe you, I love how so many people left after I said, hey, we're not gonna bash managers. That's a, that's like amazing how many people, and that's okay. You're, you're not our people, right? You're not our people, that's fine. There's plenty of other things that you can watch. Just go to Reels and swipe up a million times, all right? But if we've never met before, maybe you're watching the show because somebody hit the share button. Maybe somebody tagged you in, could be. And if we've never met, my name is Frank J. Lopes. I help auto dealers coast to coast with strategic marketing services, sales process strategy, and the absolute best live salespeople and BDC training in automotive. I'm the vice president of FB Digital, which is the best marketing and advertising agency in all of automotive. I'm also the president of Strong 30 Training Technologies, which is hands down 100% undisputed, the best training company in retail automotive for salespeople, for BDC, and for managers as well. I'm a keynote speaker and author of 7MS, it's right there, baby. 7MS, the seven minute setup mentioned in Forbes magazine as one of the seven best investments you can make. You can grab the book right now. Just go to 7minutesetupbook.com. Now available in both hardcover and soft cover, right? You can get either one. I got the hardcover, my hardcover, that's a lot to say author samples just over the weekend you can buy it right now seven minute setup book.com friends we have got such an absolutely fantastic show and i want to get to all the shout outs because i appreciate each and every single one of you all 130 people that are watching live right now i appreciate you i love you across the 13 different channels and pages and groups that we are in and i man I love that you are here. I appreciate you so, so, so much. I can't wait to get into what we're doing, but before I do, some of you already know because you're already doing it, all right? Some of you are already doing it, but I have got to know and you have got to tell me, are you in the live crew or are you in the replay crew? Friends, if you are watching live, that means that you are in the live crew. And what I want you to do is in the comments right now, I want you to put your name because our software doesn't show everybody's name and I want to be able to shout you out. So please put your name and put I am in the live crew so that I can shout you out. I want to shout you out during the show. And friends, if you're watching on the replay crew, I still love you. I still love you. I still, I still adore you and I so appreciate that you're here. I just can't shout you out live because I, I can't see you right because you're watching on the replay so put in the comments i'm in the replay crew and i will give you a shout out in the comments later on okay but if you're in the live crew right now put your name and put i am in the live crew so that i can shout you out after you do that my friends what i, I need you to do because i know that you know somebody that needs to be watching i know that each and every one of you have a manager that needs to be watching the show tonight, not in a disrespectful way, not that they're a bad manager. You wanna help them, you wanna empower them. You want them to meet their mission as well, right? You know exactly what to do. Tag them in the comments, all right? Tag them in the comments so that they will get a notification, then they get pulled into the show, and then they can watch, or they can watch it on the replay, they can stream it in their car tomorrow, in the morning, whatever it is that they wanna do tag your people tag your manager in the comments tag the other salespeople. tag salespeople that you worked with five dealerships ago tag everybody that you know because everybody needs to be watching the best show in auto live with lopes if you haven't yet it means the world to me because it means the world to the social media gods that you hit the share button hit it right now for me i'm serious like hit that share button right right now if you hit it already Hit it again. I'm serious. It is so important to me because the social media gods love when you hit the share button. Okay? So please do that for me. 131 people watching. That's not enough. But that is not enough. We got more people that we need to help. Okay? Last but not least, I know you're watching and I know, I know that throughout the show, there will be thoughts that you'll have things that you want to share, don't hold back, okay? Put it in the comments so that everybody can see it. Plus, I also want to read your comment 
at some time during the show. And I always look forward, like really, I always look forward to reading all of your comments and responding to them throughout the rest of the week, okay? So don't hold back, don't think, oh, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Oh, that's dumb. Oh, blah, 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 nah, none of that. Put it in the comments, share what you know, share what you're thinking, you got a question, put it in the comments. It's so important that you do, don't hold back, okay? Last but not least, don't forget, the best show in auto, Live with Lopes is now on seven days a week. The live show that we do, first run right now, baby, nine o'clock Eastern, each and every single Monday. And then every Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday nights at 8 p.m., we do a re-live with Lopes. We bring you the best of the best of past shows, bring them to you one more time so that you can see them again. It's amazing how many of you watch the re-lives too. It's totally great. Thank you so much for doing that. And then every Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern, getting you ready for the big Saturday. The best show in auto now on seven days a week. It's gonna take me forever to get through the shout outs, but you know what? It's totally okay. I'm gonna do as many as I can and then I can just come back to them later on. My man, first shout out like every single week. My man, Scotty T over there at Lillison Automotive. I love you, baby. Thank you so much for watching live. Brian Ross, I see you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Hermilio, my man, I see you as well. It is like everybody from Lillison Automotive is watching tonight. What is up with that? Michael Jack Kane, general manager of Lilliston Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram on the show watching tonight. So great that you're here. And there is Stacy Lilliston. I love you. So great that you are here as well. It is absolutely awesome. Phil Englander from Heart Automotive down there in Virginia. My man, so good to see you. Thank you so much for watching live. Wendell Hardy, general manager. General Manager of Toyota of Naples, my friend, so good that you're here. Jessica and Louise Compton, my girl from CMA Colonial Hyundai. She says Frank with the good, Frank with the good hair. So I love you. You are the best. Josh O oh, is watching tonight. My man Josh, so good that you're here. Lenny Temple, I see you, my friend. Robert Pollard, my man, he's here as well. So great that you're here. Brian Girardi from Hamlin & Associates watching live. Brad McKay, my man, where you been? I've been looking for, I've been like, where's Brad, man? Where's Brad? I don't see him. So great that you are here watching as well, my friend. It's awesome. Eric, I see you. It's great that you are here. Absolutely fantastic. Joe Diggs, my man, is watching. Brittany Foster, I see you. Awesome that you are here. Holly Lara, my gal, she's here. Crystal, I see you as well. Not the Holly and Crystal, everybody's thinking. Totally different, right? Okay. Joe Diggs, my man, I see you as well. Manny, I see you, Manny. Great that you are here. Mark Tamburino, my man, so good. R.D. Wayne, R.D. Wayne is watching. Great that you're here. My boy, Demetrius Naylor is watching live. So many great, great, great people. We're gonna get right, right back to the shout outs just a little bit later, but it is time to get into it. Tim Hagen, I see you creeped in there really quick out of the corner of my eye. Tim Hagen from Bob Hook Chevrolet in Louisville, Kentucky. So great that you are here as well. Okay, it is time to get going and it is time to start. If you watched the show before, you know exactly how we do this. We take the topic and we break it down into seven steps, concluding with the big point of the night, the most powerful thing that you can do to be able to meet your mission and make more commission. That's later on in the show, but let's get started with mistakes that managers make and how to fix them. Number one, number one, managers saying, just get them in. Managers saying, just get them in. Friends, there is not a salesperson out there. There is not a BDC agent out there. There is not an internet salesperson. There is not a person that has worked in some capacity in sales in an automobile dealership that did not at some time hear their manager say, man, just get him in. J j just get him in. There is not one person who has not heard those four awful words come out of a manager's mouth. J just get him in. Just get him in. Wendell Hardy says, is that really still a thing? Man, I heard it last week. Yeah, it is still a thing. 
But salespeople that are watching, you need to understand, you need to have perspective, you need to have empathy. Notice I said empathy and not sympathy, right? You need to have empathy and understanding and intel for why your manager says, just get them in. You ever notice that they say, just get them in, and it's on the down? Usually, it's kind of like this. Just get them in. Look, just, j just get them in, okay? Let me explain. Friends, managers are frustrated. Managers are tired. Managers are stressed. Managers are, are bruised and abused. And sometimes... Most of the time, just get them in. That's the only thing they got left to say. Seriously, that's the only thing that they've got left. They are at the end of the conversation. They're at the end of their rope. They're at the end of their energy. They're exhausted. They're worn out. And they're, look, look, just get them in. Now, most of the time, my friends, just get them in is actually something that the manager says, not only because they ran out of things to say, but most of the time, if you were able to record the conversation with your camera, or if you were able to record it, you would notice if you really, really looked at what led all the way up to the manager saying, just get him in, you're gonna notice that there was a big, long, drawn out thing Big, long, drawn-out conversation. And I'm not saying this as a dig, but especially with salespeople that are a little inexperienced, especially with the green peas. And a lot of times, this is with veteran salespeople that have only gone up to a certain point. They've only progressed, and they've only evolved to a certain point. And that story and that conversation has gone on probably somewhere between 3 to 15 minutes too long. Salespeople, you can, you can help this. You can fix this. You can literally, you can fix it yourself with your manager because you have empathy. You understand why they say it and where it is that they're coming from. And a lot of times, salespeople, you can fix this by just getting to the point. When you go to the manager, go to the manager proper, go to the manager ready, go to the manager prepared with the facts, and that's all you talk about with them. You go up, you explain to the manager where you are, what's going on, you're trying to get a customer back in again, this is why they didn't buy the last time, and that's it. Instead of these long, drawn-out things about how you drove four cars with them and their kid wouldn't stop crying and you you went to the soda machine and you got them a soda and that only made them worse and then you got them candy and that only made them worse and then all these things and then they had to leave and, and this, just get right to the point with your manager. That's going to make it so that your manager has less things to focus on. Remember, remember, friends, managers are bruised and abused, okay? They need things from your end to come to them as easy as possible, all right? And there are some times, I'll be totally honest, there are some times where the manager's stumped, where the manager is like, man, I, I kind of don't know what to do either, okay? It could possibly be that way. In that case, you've got to be direct and tell the manager exactly what it is that you need him or her to do. Boss, I really need you to get on the phone with this customer. Boss, could you give this customer a call? I've tried everything that I know. Can we call this customer together? Can we call the customer together? Not you going to the desk and saying, I don't know what to do with this guy and like dropping the worksheet down. Boss, can we call this customer together? I need your help and I want to see how you do it. Most of the time, my friends, just get them in is code word for something else. It's code word for either you went too far, you took too long, you're totally missing the point, right? You're totally missing the point. Remember, you're having empathy for the manager here. You're totally, the manager's saying to you, you're totally missing the point. The bottom line of this whole thing is... Just get them in. If you don't know what to say, if you don't know what to do, if, God forbid, you do get them on the phone, if you do get that customer on the phone, God forbid, it's because you're not going to know what the hell to do if they do answer the phone. 
Most of the time, salespeople are calling and they're saying, let it go to voicemail, let it go to voicemail, let it go to voicemail, because they don't know what to say. You've got to express that to your manager. Maybe the manager's going to get frustrated. Maybe they're going to be like, really? You don't know what to say? Then you just look at them and go, nah, boss, I don't know what to say. Can we call this customer together? Can we go to my desk and can we call this customer together? Can you call this customer and I will listen to you? A second voice, maybe this customer needs a second voice. This manager needs, this customer needs somebody to jump in. The worst thing that you can do as a salesperson is to get frustrated or to get angry or to be like, all he does is tell me just get him in. If you need the extra boost, if you need the tip, if you need the guidance, ask the manager. They absolutely will help you. They don't make money unless you make money. Think about it. That's the way that this whole thing, that's the way the system works. Salespeople have to make money first. They have to make money before a manager can make money. Salesperson doesn't sell a car. Manager don't make no money. Okay, you think manager's walking around with a big, hefty, like super, super, super heavy salary or something? Hell no. Hell to no. Managers right now in the comments, back me up. You got yourself a big, huge, like big, huge $20,000 a month salary? Put it in the comments right now. Hell no. So that salespeople can see, so that they understand, so that they can have understanding and empathy for this. I got a feeling I'm like about to break the comments over here, break the software because it's like with all the hell knows after this, right? But friends, saying it, right? When the when the manager is saying to you, just get them in, you got to understand what is behind that, okay? Understand what's behind it. If you need help, go ahead and ask them for help, all right? So number one mistake managers make and how to stop it when they say just get them in. Let's keep it going and let's move on to number two, okay? And number two, mistakes managers make and how to stop them is when they say, make a hundred calls a day. Make a hundred calls a day. Salespeople, how many of you have heard a manager say to you, make a hundred calls a day? It's going to be everybody because that's something that every single manager says. But once again, salespeople, we need to employ empathy here, okay? We need to employ empathy. We need to employ understanding. The exact same way that we do this with our salespeople, with, I'm sorry, let me re rewind. The way that we do this with our customers is the exact same way that we need to do this with our managers as well. We need to employ empathy. We need to understand where they're coming from. When they say something, a lot of times it's not word for word. You can't take them literal. What is the meaning behind it? What is it that they're usually trying? What, what message are they trying to get through, right? And most of the time, make a hundred calls a day is message for there's no activity. You guys aren't doing anything. You're watching way too many TikToks. You guys are talking to each other too much. All you're doing is looking at the clock, waiting for the roach wagon or the lunch wagon or whatever you guys call it to pull up so that you can go get another strawberry bang. Or maybe somebody's looking around, going, trying to get a lunch order together. We are here to make money. We are here to create action. We're here to help people purchase a vehicle. We're here to help people get past their fears and that means that you need to create some activity. You need to create some activity. Saying make 100 calls a day is code for <laughs> let's wake up and let's get some activity going. That's exactly what it is that they're trying to say to you. Let's get something going. Make 100 calls a day or is also, AKA, is also, let's get on the phones. What are you guys doing? What do you got? There's nothing going on over here. You can't sell cars to each other. Get on the phones. That thing is not going to dial itself. Pick it up and dial. Get going. Get busy. That's exactly what it is that they're trying to say. Okay? Managers are trying to say we need activity here. Now, should you be making 100 calls a day? Right? Literally, like 100 calls a day? Managers know just as well as I do and just as well as you do that out of that 100 calls a day, 
five are going to be to your girlfriend or boyfriend, two are going to be to your barber, one's going to be to your mama, another one's, we know, we know that you're going to fluff the calls, okay, we understand, we get it, you know why, when we were man when we were salespeople, we did the exact same thing, we fluffed our calls as well, but if you stay busy, if you stay active, if you're constantly doing your follow-up, if you're going to your manager asking for ideas, asking for help, asking for guidance, asking for that second person on the telephone, asking for that EMI when it comes to the when it comes to follow-up, if you are busy, if you look busy, if the manager looks in the CRM and sees your activities, sees that you're sending out those text messages, sees that you're sending out those videos, they're not going to say make 100 calls a day. Make 100 calls a day is code for let's go. You're slacking. You're not staying busy. You're wasting time. Let's create some action and let's make something happen up in this mother right here. That's exactly what it is. That's what make 100 calls a day, what it actually means. I told you, this was not going to be a show where we bash managers because that's not what it's about. Absolutely not. This is a show where salespeople, I try to help you. I try to help you so that you can understand, all right, and so that you can get more out of your relationship with your manager so that you don't have to hear some of these things, so that you understand them. And managers, maybe that you're watching, maybe you can pick out a, hey, you know what, maybe I should just say, let's get on the phones. Maybe I should just say, let's get it going. Maybe I should just say that instead of make 100 calls a day. If that's what come out, comes out of it, great. But salespeople, I want you to understand. Managers, I want you to always, always always get better. I've got a question for you, friends. Have you ever had a manager that has said, just get them in or get on the phones and make a hundred calls a day? Have you had either one of those? If you had, put it in the comments right now and we will be back. More of the best show in auto. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Don't go anywhere. We're just getting warmed up, baby. Don't go nowhere. Live with Lopes is brought to you by iRecon from V Auto. See every step of the reconditioning journey for every car. Car Now, the only road that can bridge online and in showroom. And Hamlin and Associates, your next record month starts here. Ever wonder why the best of the best choose Hamlin and Associates? Check this out. My answer to why I do so much business is results. Hamlin & Associates gets me results. We have always used Hamlin & Associates, and we've always had great results. When it comes to a company managing your customer information and managing your direct mail for your business, I would definitely pick John Hamlin & Associates. We can have such a high-level intelligent conversation with our consumer base and talk to them in real terms that opens so many doors and gives us so many uh, better chances to convert. We're using data technology and communication strategies that our competitors don't even know exist. Are you interested in learning how so many of the largest and most progressive dealers consistently produce incredible results? Give us a call and we'll explain in five minutes or less. Hey, if you've watched the show, you've heard me say it before. You need direct mail in your marketing mix at your dealership. Managers, I know you're all watching because you thought I was going to like bash managers during the show and you're like, oh, he's not. Oh, okay. He's actually okay. He's actually pretty cool. All right. But uh, now I got your attention. I know that you know that you need to have direct mail in your marketing mix. This is the place you got to go right here. Hamlin and Associates. Okay. They are my 100% exclusive direct mail place that whenever I'm doing direct mail for any for any of the 50 plus dealers that we work with at FB Digital, I am going right direct to here. No thinking about it, no shopping it around, no nothing like that. I'm going directly to Hamlin and Associates. I'm picking up the phone. I'm calling Brian Girardi. I'm calling Grant Zimmerman. I'm calling John Hamlin. I'm calling one of them and I'm saying, I need to do mail and I need to do it right and I need to do it now, not yesterday, not two weeks, now. I need to do it now. And for years and years and years, the end of that call is always the same. It's always, Frank, we're on it. Boom, done, and that's it, right? The mail goes out, we have success each and every single time, right? You need to do the exact same thing. All you gotta do is go to hamlinandassociates.com or 
Go through the comments right now and find Brian Girardi, find Grant Zimmerman. They're watching the show each and every single week. Brian Grant in the comments right now. Put your cell phone number in the comments so somebody can reach out to you. Okay, because I know that there's going to be somebody who's going to want to do some mail. And now they know exactly where it is to go. It's right here. Hamlin and Associates. You're watching Live with Lopes. Need some motivation and inspiration first thing in the morning? Sure you do. Join the Get More Frank text crew for daily motivation and inspiration delivered direct to your phone. Text Let Me In to 732-561-1854 to join the crew and get more Frank. Hi everybody, Mike Poro here, and I'm ready for more Frank. We are back. We are back, my friends. Mistakes managers make and how to stop them on this brand new episode of The Best Show in Auto, live with Lopes. I'm so happy that you're here. We are just getting warmed up. Seriously, we are just getting warmed up and we are helping salespeople understand managers. We are helping managers meet their mission so that everybody can make more commission. That's the name of the game and that's exactly what it is that we are doing. Friends, I'm so, so happy that you're here this evening. So happy because if you're here live, you know what that means? Know what you can do? That means that you can tag somebody that you know should be watching the show. You can tag them in the comments right now. It's super simple. Just go into the comments, hit the at symbol, start to type their name. I know that so far you're watching and you're like, oh, you know what? Ernie should really be watching this. Bob should really be watching this. Sally should really be watching this. Stacy should really be watching. Tag them. Don't sit there and wish. You don't got no telepathic capability or something like that, but you can tag them in the comments and then their phone will go bing and they know that they should be watching the show, right? Or maybe they'll watch it tomorrow on the replay. No problem, but tag your managers, tag the other salespeople, tag everybody that you know, except your mom. She may not want to watch this, but tag people and bring them into the show. If you have not yet, it means the world to me. Like if I could stay in the camera and beg to you, I would. It means the world to me that you hit the share button. Okay, so hit the share button right now. Even if you hit it before, I don't care. Hit the share button. The social media gods love it, which means I love it, which means I got to ask you to do it. I got to beg you to do it. If I could pay you, I would do it, all right? But hit the share button right now, please. Last but not least, as you're watching, there's so many great comments. I can't wait to read them, to read them all. I can't wait to answer them all, but don't stop, okay? Don't stop. Keep, keep sharing those comments. Please keep type in those comments in below. I want to hear them. And trust me, everybody else that's watching, they want to hear them as well. They want to read them as well. Okay. So don't hold your comments back. Okay. So, so, so great of a show today. Mark Tamburino says, I worked all day. I'm watching. Let's go. Gotta be at work early. It's the end of the month. Hey man, the end of the month. Now, Mark, I'm, I, I love you, buddy, but the end of the month or the first of the month, it should be exactly the same thing. Pedal down, pedal to the metal, right? Full gas, full throttle each and every single day. The first of the month or the 30th of the month. Every day is the last day of the month, baby, right? Every day is the last day of the month. That's the mindset that we got to have. I know you have it. I just had the opportunity to be able to actually say it. My man, Erod over there at Chase Chevrolet, Ernie Rodriguez, my friend. So, so good to see you. And it's great that you're it, great, 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 great that you are here. So many people had a manager. I can't even read them all. There's so many, okay? But so many people had a manager that had said to them, hey, just get them in or man, get on the phone, make a hundred calls a day. My favorite one is the one that Brittany Foster put on. She must like it too, where somebody says, that thing is not gonna dial itself damn straight. That thing is not gonna dial itself. We all know that. The text messages don't go out on their own. 
man, you got to pick it up and you got to call these people. Okay. All right. So let's get back into it. Mistakes, mistakes managers make and how to stop making them, how to help your manager stop making them, managers, how you can stop making them yourself. Let's go on. We are on number three. Number three, mistakes managers make and how to stop them, repeating what has worked years ago. Repeating what has worked years ago. Friends, this is just nothing but human behavior. That's it. That's all this is. Human behavior tells each and every one of us that we should be doing this right here, that we should be repeating what worked years ago. The problem is here, the challenge is that things change, okay? Things change, and I don't think, I've been doing this for a long time, okay? You see this stuff right here? This means I've been around for a while, and I have not seen more things change. I'm not talking about technology-wise. I'm talking about the influence that technology has over what we do. I'm talking about circumstances. I'm talking about life events, global life events that have caused behaviors to change, communication methods to change, communication behaviors to change, right? Tools, all of these things. We haven't seen so much change in any decade that has gone by than we have seen in the last two and a half years. Usually the amount of change that would take a whole decade to actually happen, a whole 10 years is going on, or I should say has gone on just in the last two and a half years. And friends, look, just like every baseball player's got his favorite glove or his favorite batting gloves or his favorite batting stance or his favorite bat, right? Or the cap that he wears all the time that he keeps wearing over and over again until he loses, a lot of managers stick with something until they feel that they have lost. The problem is that a lot of times it did already, the, the game's already lost. They're, the manager's in the 10th or 12th or 13th inning and the ballpark is empty and they're still doing the exact same thing. Friends, this is human behavior. That's it. And managers, what we have to do, what we've got to look at and the way that we have to approach this is that we've got to take a big old bite, right? We got to eat our own dog food. We're constantly saying to salespeople all the time, hey, what you've learned up to this point is only going to get you to this point. If you want to learn more, if you want to grow more, you've got to do more things. You've got to work harder. You've got to, you've got to go and you've got to learn new stuff. But managers, we got to do this too. It's dog food that we've got to eat ourselves. OK, it's the, we got to live by those exact same rules and those exact same words. Managers, we always have to be evolving. We've always got to be looking at new ways, new things that we can do, new communication techniques, new communication tools. We always have to be doing this. And managers, the only way that you can do this, the only way that you can really learn these things in a lot of ways is you've got to self-educate. You've got to take the initiative to look at other industries, to look at like real estate, to look at, you know, high ticket sales, to look at these other things and say, how does somebody who's in the real estate industry, how did, for example, how does a real estate agent answer leads. How do they respond to leads? What tools do they use? What do they say? It doesn't just have to be real estate. You can, when you go to 20 group meetings, instead of going there and talking about how great you are, right? See if you can get some information from other managers that are there. If you're not going to 20 group meetings, maybe you should ask your dealer, tell them, hey, you know what? We should join this 20 group so that we can go, so that I can go, whatever. Conferences, all kinds of shows like this where you think somebody like me is just on here going, ba 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 But people in the comments will tell you this is where they learn. This is where the good stuff is. You got to have an open mind. And this is one that managers, like, that's, this is a big one. They close their mind off, but we have to understand 
We literally, we have got to have empathy and we have got to understand that a lot of times the amount of pressure, the amount of accountability, the amount of all of these things that gets pushed down onto managers, it causes them to stay in their lane. It causes them to be scared to take chances, to try new things, to teach new things, to learn new ways. We have to have that empathy. This is really what I'm talking about now. Not only is it for salespeople to have empathy for managers, but my dealers that are watching, most of you on the replay, but the dealers that are watching, you've got to have empathy and understand that if my managers are going to learn more, I've got to facilitate that learning the exact same way that I expect my managers to facilitate my salespeople learning. As a dealer, as a business owner, I have got to help my managers learn as well so that they can continue to progress, so they can continue to evolve, so they can continue to realize how much bigger their potential really is. This is something that each and every, and Matt, dealers, you gotta do that too, right? Each and every one of us just repeating what has worked for us in the past will only get us to the best point of our past. That's as high as we are gonna be able to go, okay? and coming up, right? Coming up. So many people talking about winter is coming. It's going to get tougher. People are already in comments and people are already saying and the word out there is like, man, things are starting to tighten up. The banks aren't buying the way they were. We've got to evolve. Each and every one of us has got to evolve into the next best version of ourselves. We've got to learn more so that we can earn more. And for managers, it starts with letting go of that Linus blanket, letting go of the things that we have been using for decades or years and years and years because they always worked in the past and us eating some of our own dog food, right? Taking some of our own medicine and evolving and looking for new ways to do things. So number three, number three of mistakes managers make and how to stop them repeating what has worked continually over like a broken record over and over and over repeating what has worked in the past. Let's keep going and let's go on to number four. Number four mistake managers make and how to stop them is managers punch down. Managers punch down. I put a post on Facebook about this, you know, uh, I think it was over the weekend and Man, the, the amount of comments was absolutely, I still, I think I still have 30 or 40 of them that I've got to answer. Managers, you can never, ever, ever get people to do what it is that they need to do. You can't motivate, you can't inspire, you cannot be the higher power. You can't do any of those things if you're constantly punching down. Because Nobody wants to be punched down on. Instead of punching down, you've got to reach down. You've got to put your hand out and pick that person up. Pick that salesperson up. Pick that BDC agent up. Pick that internet salesperson up. The porter, the car washer, whoever it is. The hand, whenever your hand is reaching down, it should never be like this. It should always be like this. You want to help somebody, grab them and pull them up. Salespeople, you have to understand why does the punching down happen? Where does it come from? The punching down, my friends, it comes from years and years and years of bad behavior. It comes from the manager's manager, the person who taught them. It comes from them punching down all the time. Each and every single one of us, we learn most of our behaviors from observation, okay? And managers are people too, and it's no different for them either. But managers, we have evolved past that. We now want to be the manager that our salespeople look back at and they say, man, that one, that guy really helped me out. Wow, I had this manager, her name was Susan. She was awesome, she really helped me. I had this manager, Ernie, man, Man, Ernie was tough, but he was fair and he helped me. Do you, managers, do you want to be that person in the future that somebody looks back at and they model you as the manager that they want to be? Or do you want the flip side to happen? The flip side of, man, when I'm a manager, I'm never going to be like Frank. 
man, when I'm a manager, I am never going to be like Brittany. I'm never going to be like Susan. Man, she was tough. She was she was so tough. She never lit. Do you want to be the manager that your salespeople strive to be like, like they want to grow up and be? Or are you going to take the other side? Are you going to take the other side and you are, are you going to wind up being the manager that your salespeople say, I never want to be like that. When you punch down, that's exactly what it is that you're striving for. That's the direction that you're going in. Never, ever, ever punch down. Put that hand out like this and grab. Never, ever punch down. At the same time, salespeople, when you need help, you need to go to your managers and you need to ask for help. You need to be specific. You need to go to them proper, prepared, and ready to go, ex asking for exactly what it is that you need help with, okay? Keep the negativity out. Keep all of the byproduct out. Just stick with the facts. Go to your manager with exactly what they what it is that they need. Manager, never ever like this. Always like this. Reach down, reach down and pick and pick them up. Friends, I love, I love the question that I'm about to ask you that I'm gonna ask you to answer in the comments. This is a really, really, really good one. Like, man, my team came up with a great a great question like this when this was a good one what is this what is the behavior that you had a sales manager do okay that to this day you still say wow that helped me what was the behavior that a sales manager taught you or a sales manager did that if you could go to that sale to that manager you would say thank you that you still remember it to this day Answered in the comments, and we will be back. We're just getting warmed up. There is more of The Best Show in Auto live with Lopes coming up in just 90 seconds. We'll be right back. Live with Lopes is brought to you by Hamlin & Associates. Your next record month starts here. I recon from V Auto. See every step of the reconditioning journey for every car. And Car Now, the only road that can bridge online and in showroom. Getting a deposit at 11 o'clock at night, and guess what? Scheduling delivery for the next day, it's happened. The fact that that client was able to transact outside of normal business hours is a tried and true statement of where this business is going. Yeah, we work really hard to make sure that the relationship with the partner is about the numbers and the metrics and the analytics. Our leads went up 30 to 40 percent over our previous provider, and then when we added the buy now piece, they went up even more after that. So it's been one thing after the other that's led us to a continued partnership with Carna. In the entire world, if you get results, you trust the people. That's what it boils down to. And we have great results. We had a 300% increase. Leads, appointments, gross increase, sales. You're watching Live with Lopes. Hey friends, the Car Sales Success app is now available for each and every one of you to download and to use. You can download it for free, my friends. Download it for free. You instantly, as soon as you download it, you get access to five sales cards. Those sales cards, they automatically come up in the app. They will be objections, how to handle objections. They will be tips. They will be part of the sales process. Things to help you. You will get five of them for free. Bang, right out of the gate. If you love what you see, then subscribe. It's going to cost you less than $12 a month. There is no excuse anymore for your dealership not having training or not having enough training or not have whatever it is. Forget it. My good friend Chris Martinez, executive manager at Jackie Cooper Imports in Tulsa, Oklahoma, former general sales manager of 1,200 car a month, Charles Montoyota in Austin, Texas. Him and I have been together for almost a decade and we built this app right here, the Car Sales Success app. You get access to training videos. You get access to daily motivation videos. You get access to all of our eBooks, all the books that Chris wrote, all the books that I wrote, the books that we wrote together. You get access to all of this and there are over 100 
150 objections, sales cards, sales techniques, things that you can use that can help you earn more money. $12 a month. Don't dr drink one less strawberry bang or one less cherry Red Bull a day, and you can easily afford the Car Sales Success app. Download it right now at carsalessuccess.com. Five sales cards for free. You love it. Subscribe. Less than $12 a month. You can train yourself and you can train from the best. From myself and Chris Martinez, download the Car Sales Success app. Hey, everybody. Eric Hall here with Classic Chevrolet. And it's time to get more Frank. I absolutely love the comments. I love this. This is absolutely fantastic. And I want to get to as many of them as I possibly can. Mistakes managers make and how to stop them on this brand new episode of The Best Show in Auto live with Lopes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching live. If you're watching on the replay, hey, I love you too. Thank you as well. And I love that you are that you are here. Friends, if you have not done it yet, I've got to ask you, I got to beg you, I got to do whatever it is that I got to do. Hit the share button, okay? Hit that share button. The social media gods love it. That means that I love it. That also means that I need it, okay? So hit the share button so we can get the show out to as many people as we possibly can, okay? After you hit the share button, I know that you know somebody that needs to be watching this show tonight. I know that you have a manager that if they watch the show tonight, they'd be like, damn, yeah, that's some good stuff, man. They would really get a lot out of it. You know what you need to do. Tag them in the comments, right? Just hit that at symbol. Hit the at symbol. I have no idea what went on there with the breath and I have no idea. Hit the at symbol, type in their name, boom, you'll see their name pop up, click it, they will get a notification to jump in and to watch or maybe they'll watch tomorrow, but don't, don't not resist and make sure that you tag your managers, tag the other salespeople, tag your mama if you want, okay? Whatever you want, tag people and bring them in. Last but not least, don't forget, the best show in auto, Live with Lopes is now on seven days a week, each and every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's the live first run, brand new show. And then every Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we do a re-live with Lopes where we bring out one of the best shows from the past and we show it again. I love how many of you are watching the re-lives. It's absolutely great. Just because, just because it was a show from a few weeks ago don't mean that it ain't good, right? Doesn't mean that it isn't still relevant. So make sure you keep watching those. And then every Saturday morning at 8 a.m., the best show in auto now on seven days a week. I love this comment because I asked what was something that a manager taught you that you still remember and you're still using today. My man Ray Council said, I was told to make a friend and then make a sale. That helped shift my, shift my perspective early on. I love like I love that one. Make a friend and then make a sale. Absolutely great. Brian Ross says, treat a man like a man till you can't anymore, but that doesn't mean you have to browbeat them. That's right, That that is absolutely right. Treat a man like a man, but that doesn't mean you beat him up. Okay, one thing has absolutely nothing to do with the other. That is, that is great, great, great advice right there, absolutely. Mark, my man, Mark says, if your manager and your people don't think that about you to be like you, then that's disappointing. Motivate and teach, absolutely. The managers, your people have got to be your people. That's the whole point, right? And we're gonna get into some more of those points coming up and everything, you know, coming up and everything as well. This one is great from Brian Ross. Punching down will never allow your people to feel like you have their back. That is so absolute 1,000% 1, 1, true. This one too, I wanted to put it up before the break, but I had to wait until now. My man, Wendell Hardy, Frank, change is great and we embrace it. But some of the old school is still extremely effective. It's true, right? It's the little things that change, not the big ones. That's absolutely true. I'm not saying you throw the baby out with the bathwater, but what I'm saying is, man, you know, when that hat is dirty, when it's stinky, when you can't even tell what team's hat it is anymore, 
might be time to get a new hat. Right? Doesn't mean you stop wearing a hat. It just means you get a new one. That's really all. That's really all it is that it comes down to. Right? That's the bottom line. That's the name of the game. All right. It is time to get back into it. Let's keep it going. We are getting up. We are leading up to the big point when we are almost there. But first, first, we have got to do number five and six. Let's get into it with number five mistakes managers make and how to stop them. Not inspecting what they are expecting. Mistakes managers make and how to stop them. Not inspecting what they are expecting. Salespeople, there's no empathy that's going to help here. There is no nothing like that whatsoever, except a tip I'm going to give you at the end of this point. Okay, but managers, you have got to take the time. You've got to invest the time. You've got to learn, if necessary, you need to learn how to inspect exactly what it is that you expect from your salespeople, okay? That is the way that they learn. Accountability is the byproduct of inspecting what it is that you expect. And this is one that, man, this is one that always meant a lot to me, but it really came to the forefront when I started working with Alex Flores six and a half years ago. That's when it really, really, really came up because with Alex, we are always inspecting what we expect. If we expect that our salespeople close at a certain percentage, we are always looking at the closing percentage, okay? If we expect our BDC to be contacting customers at a certain percentage, setting appointments at a certain, a certain percentage, if we are expecting them to confirm appointments, for appointments to show up, because that's what really the name of the game is, right? Set all the appointments you want. If you don't confirm them and they don't show, who cares? But we can't actually expect it to happen if we don't inspect. And managers, that's a huge thing that I see so many managers not doing. We are expecting things to go on. We're expecting our salespeople to do certain things, but we don't inspect what it is that they're doing. We don't inspect what the actual numbers are. And here comes the empathy part. I totally understand that a lot of managers have never, ever been taught the proper way to do this. I understand that they've never, ever been taught how to go into the CRM and actually inspect these numbers, how to inspect all of these behaviors, how to inspect these actions. I, I've seen it because I have taught so many managers how to do this. Salespeople, your empathy, where can that come in? What can you do to make this better? Follow your manager's guidance. Do what they say, okay? Do what they say. Realize the manager is your friend. The manager only tells you things. They only give you actions. They only tell you to do your tasks and stuff like that because they know it will help you make money. It is the key to you making money. If you don't do them, then you are not doing, you're not taking the actions that your manager is expecting you to take. And the accountability is going to come. Of course they're frustrated. Of course they're angry. They tell you to do your follow-up and you don't. You watch 300 TikToks instead. Come on, I know it happens. You know it happens too, right? We keep it straight over here. Sometimes it's a smacky smack for whatever, right? But we keep it real and we keep it straight. Mark Tamburino, right? Managers should confirm appointments always. Absolutely, a thousand percent. That's a huge part. That is one of the actual, like, once that is one of the secret, secret superpowers of the strong 30 process is that managers are always confirming appointments. Always, 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 right? You managers are, are putting out actions. They're telling the customers, they're setting the, they're telling the salespeople, they are setting the expectation because they want their salespeople to succeed. They do not want you to fail. You think sometimes salespeople that the manager's out to get you. Trust me, the manager's not out to get you. That's like absolutely ridiculous. That is just preposterous and ridiculous and stupid. Okay, the manager is not out to get you in any way, shape or form. But friends, you have to understand something. 
You've got to do what you're told. You've got to fill up that expectation. But managers, each and every one of you, you have got to inspect what you expect. And if you don't, if you don't do that, you're never going to be able to get your salespeople to actually move to the next level. So number five, manage, mistakes that managers make and how to stop them is not inspecting what they expect. Let's keep it going and let's go on to number six. And this is a big one. This is a big one. Mistakes managers make is they focus so much on managing versus leading. They focus on managing versus leading. Like I said, this is not... This is not a go after the manager or trash the manager type of call. That's not what type of thing. That's not what we're doing here. Okay. But let me make sure that each and every single person, managers and salespeople, that they understand this point. Let's start with managers. Just because your title is manager, that does not mean that you are like a manager at a McDonald's. That is, does not mean that you are a manager in the mail room and you're managing all the mail and stuff like that, okay? That's not what we're talking about. The manager is just title. It's just a word. That's it. When you're in a manager's position, your real job is to lead. Your real job is to inspire. Your real job is to empower, to do all of these things to and for your salespeople so that they then can take care of your customers in the way that you know is best and in the way that you see fit. It's to be a leader, to make it so that your salespeople can consistently realize how large, how massive their potential is. It's to consistently be motivating your salespeople to make that one extra call, to send that one extra text message, to send that one extra video, to not have a sour face when a customer pulls up a half an hour before closing. It's to sit with your salespeople and do those one-on-one -on -one meetings and make sure that your salesperson knows that they can actually achieve more, that they have more potential, that they have more power inside of them. That is what it's all about. That's the name of the game. Manager is just a title. It's just a word that goes under your picture on the staff page of the website. That's all it is. In reality, what you are is you are a leader. That is what your job is. That really should be what your title should be, okay? You are a leader. You are there to motivate, to guide, to coach, to teach, to do everything in your power that you could possibly imagine to do, to do all of those things to help your salespeople, then help their customers, to help each and every one of your salespeople grow and mature and evolve into the best version of themselves, to teach all of your salespeople that they should always be doing things today that make their future self, that will make their future self look back and say, thanks for doing that. That was a great investment of time. I know it was hard for you back then, but look at us now, look at what we're doing. Managers, that's what you should be doing all day long, okay? Now, let's flip it. Let's flip it to the other side. Salespeople, do you know why managers at times, why they don't do those types of things? Nine times out of 10, let me go even further, okay? Let me get a little bit more extreme on this one. 99 times out of 100, it's not because the manager doesn't want to do those things. It's not because of the fact that the manager thinks that those things are a waste of time or they don't have the heart or they don't have anything like that. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It's because of the massive amount of pressure. It's a, because of the abuse. It's because of the amount of pushing down. You have to understand that your manager's neck is the one that's out there all the time. Constantly, it's your manager's neck that is always on the line. The buck stops with them. 
They are the ones. You have to have the empathy for them and understand that. And you have to say to yourself, my manager would never tell me to do this if it wasn't in my best interest. If it wasn't in the best interest of the customer. If it wasn't in the best interest of the dealership. All of those things together mean that the manager is watching out for me. That is what the intention is in their mind, in their heart. That's what they want to do. They're human, okay? They're human, just like everybody else. They're human, and they're going to make mistakes. They're going to trip. They're going to fall. They're going to stumble. It's going to happen. You have to have empathy and realize they may be having a bad day. Maybe they got problems at home just like you. Maybe they got family at home just like you. Maybe they've got a sick parent just like you. Maybe they do. You have to exercise that empathy and lay off a little bit, a little bit. You make some of that space and guess what? You're going to get that space back as well. But managers, we really flip back again, right? Now I'm talking to my managers again. We need to make sure that each and every single day, that is what our purpose is. That's what our mission is, to help each and every one of our salespeople grow and get better and evolve into the next best version of themselves. Who, in reality, so much of the stuff that managers get bogged down doing doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because selling cars will fix all problems. Taking care of customers fixes all problems. Selling cars fixes all problems. Let's get some admins. Let's get some assistants. Let's get some people to help with all the minutia work. Dealers, this one's for you. Hire some damn assistants to get rid of the minutia work, the stupid crap, so that managers can inspect what they expect, so they can have one-on-ones every day with their salespeople, so that they can coach and train on their own, so that they can back up messages that people like me during weekly calls for training, that they can back them up and they can teach them again and they can do all this type of great stuff. Let's get rid of a lot of this minutia work. Let's stop saying, my managers are making a ton. They're making a fortune. They should be able to do it all. They're human, man. Come on, right? Cut them a little bit of a break. But managers, we need to always keep that perspective, keep that focus. We Manager is just a word that goes under our picture on the website. We are leaders and leaders. Leaders are what we do, okay? That's the bottom line. We are there to lead and guide and help our people. Last question of the night, my friends, put the answer into the comments. Have you ever worked for a manager that was a true leader? Have you ever worked for a manager that is a true leader? Put his or her name in the comments. If you want to tag them, go ahead. All right. Put their name in the comments. Go ahead and tag them. Have you ever worked for a true leader? And say in the comments, why they were such a great leader okay i want to see the comments fill up seriously i want it so that the software so that the production software can barely even keep up all right have you ever worked for a manager that was a true leader put their name in the comments and in the comments say hey this person was the best they led me they led me they were a true leader because and put it in there okay answer that and we will be right back with the big point coming up in just a minute on The Best Show on Auto, live with Lopes. We'll be right back. Live with Lopes is brought to you by Car Now, the only road that can bridge online and in showroom. Hamlin and Associates, your next record month starts here. And I recon from V Auto. See every step of the reconditioning journey for every car. Forty-nine percent of dealers say that it takes them eight to sixteen days to get their cars for online ready. With undefined timeframes and limited accountability, it is no wonder dealers struggle to speed up their reconditioning times and rein in their costs. Videoto's reconditioning solution, iRecon, helps you gain control of your reconditioning process and monitor each vehicle's progress so that you can get your cars to the front line where they can be seen and sold faster. 
iRecon isn't just a company with a light integration into Viato. We are Viato. You're watching Live with Lopes. 7MS, the seven minute setup by Frank J. Lopes was tagged as one of the seven best investments you can make by Forbes Magazine. Yeah, Forbes Magazine. Grab it today on Amazon, Apple Books, Barnes & Noble, and wherever books are sold online. Fitzpatrick, Pash, Kane, Lewis, Greenfield, Reed, Dawson, Lopes, Rice. The best lineup in retail automotive. CBTnews.com. Subscribe today. This is Jameson Johnson with Athens Ford. Hashtag right with JJ. It is time to get more Frank. Let's go. We are back. Mistakes managers make and how to stop them on the best show in auto live with Lopes. I am so, so happy you're here. I'm so thankful that you are here, my friends, because man, we're up to the big point right now. But I think so, so far we've already given managers a tremendous amount of ideas and of tips and also salespeople. I think we've given each and every one of you a lot of perspective, a lot of a different look, a lot of understanding, right? Of where it is that your manager has come as is coming from and what it is that they're dealing with and man, what's going through their head, right? Managers, I think we've given you a lot of perspective as well. Has it been a good show tonight? Do you think it's been a good show? Give me a thumbs up in the comments right now. Hit, give me that thumbs up emoji if you think that it's been a good show before, good show so far. We're getting up to the big point right now, okay? So give me a thumbs up emoji. Give me a yes. Give me a hell yeah. Give me a 100. Give me whatever, okay? Give me whatever. Put it in the comments right now if you think it has been an absolutely fantastic show. If you've learned something and if you've gotten something out of this don't forget my friends i know that you know somebody that needs to be watching the show tonight okay tag them in the comments it's so important that you do that all you gotta do is just hit the at symbol type in their name okay they will get a notification bang that's exactly what it is that you want to do tag the people that you know need to be watching the show that should be watching the show tag your managers tag your old managers tag your great aunt i don't care tag everybody and bring them in if you haven't yet please hit the share button so we can get the show out to as many people as we possibly can also so that we can send that notification to all the social media gods and we can say hey this is something that people want to see and people that this is mostly things that people need to see so hit that share button and that is exactly what it is that happens guys thank you so much for your thumbs up thank you for the 100s thank you for ernie my man erod saying in all three absolutely great this is a comment that honestly after i asked the last question for the break which was did you ever have a manager who was a true did you ever work for a manager who was a true leader and what was it that made them so good what made them a true leader and i was hoping in the back of my mind i was saying man i hope wendell answers i really really hope that wendell answers because i know the story already but i want as many people to know it as possible and absolutely wendell did answer and he said yes his great manager that he worked with or for Brian Kramer. Brian Kramer was a great leader. He understood that he needed to get out of the way and he let the crew do what they did best. He also didn't take credit for the store's success as it wasn't him that built the store. It was the team and that did this is the team that did the heavy lifting. Brian was great at coming up with new ideas. Blessed to have worked with him. Much respect to my brother and friend. Absolutely. Then look, th this is what each and every one of us should be striving for. And here's another thing. L let me just add this in before I move on to the next comment. My man, Wendell Hardy, who gives the credit to, Bri to Brian Kramer, Wendell Hardy's the exact same way. 
he is the exact same person new innovative right supportive giving credit to everybody else i've known wendell hardy for years for years and i have always looked up looked up to him if you are working in a car dealership wendell is somebody that you absolutely need to follow okay so hit his name in the comments right now go to his profile and hit that follow button okay you need to be connected to him without a doubt i can't tell who said this because as you can see sometimes this is what the software does right but whoever it was put this you know put your name into the comments right now so that i can give you the shout out he shouted out to his manager matthew damos i think i pronounced that the right way because he made sure we knew the ability within us to be great managers you see that's exactly what it is that you should be doing all the time you should always be making it so each and every single person on your team everybody that reports to you that looks up to you all that type of stuff right that you should absolutely always be making sure that they understand that there is so much greatness inside of them each and every single day tell all your salespeople, tell the other managers tell the people in the bdc lou ramirez is the one who was talking about matt damos that's actually absolutely great but make sure that you are constantly constantly pumping power pumping empowerment good stuff to them that's what so many of our people so many of the people that are on our team that's what they need Need. They need that supportive word. They need that reassurance, the confidence of somebody else. That's what'll definitely make a difference in their lives. Some of them, they don't get that from anywhere. They don't get it from home. They don't get it from any place. They come into work. You can be that person to give it to them. Absolutely. Make sure you make it a point every day to be able to do this. This is another one before we get to the big point. Brittany Foster has been loading up with these absolutely fantastic comments all night. This is one that I, I, got a, I didn't read it yet, but I got a feeling I need to read it. And Brittany's saying... Reverend Mike, I don't want to pronounce the last name the right way. Isham, I believe. Such an inspiration. Lester Brown, you all were always there and still are. Thank you. When you teach someone how to survive for the long run, I think that means more than anything. That's, that's absolutely true. Someone can show you how to work a lease or do a simple task, but when you have someone who will always be there for you and truly want the best for you for the long haul, that's what matters. People like that people like that will never be forgotten and instill greatness. You got to be that 1%. Forget what everybody else is doing. Build your business. That is absolutely great. This is what I'm talking about. Brittany has been loading up with great comments all night. This is obviously somebody that each and every one of us need to follow. Okay, so tap on her name right there. Hit that follow button, send her a friend request, whatever it is, man, she's got good things to say. This is why I'm always saying, share your comments, right? Put your comments in. Don't think that what you have to say or what you're thinking that it's not important. Don't be judging yourself like that. You got something to say, put it in the comments and share it with everybody else. Okay, let's keep going and let's wrap it up because we are up to number seven, the big, big point managers make mistakes this is how we stop them number seven number seven is they focus i got this backwards there we go number seven focusing only on the gross focusing only on the gross this is exactly what it this is one that's going to be direct 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 to managers there is no salesperson part of this there's no salesperson empathy or anything managers this is just me and you talking all right I know way too many managers, general managers, dealer managers, dealer partners, executive managers, whatever, that all they do is focus on the gross and they do not look at all at the actions that lead and that build to that gross. Friends, the money that we make, it is it is important. It is vitally important. I agree a thousand percent, okay? It is vitally 100% important. But friends, you've got to understand, managers, you've got to understand that gross is a byproduct. It is a byproduct of all of the actions that are salespeople, that the other managers, that each and every single staff member in the dealership 
every team member the gross is a byproduct of the actions that they perform each and every single day if you focus on the actions the gross will come but if you focus only on the gross then all you're doing is chasing money the faster you run after money the faster the money will run and it is a constant constant chase Instead of that, we need to change the focus. We need to realize gross is a byproduct of all of the actions that our team members take. If you focus on the actions, if you focus on teaching the actions, coaching the actions, training on the actions, empowering the people that actually perform the actions, inspecting what you expect, if you focus on all of those things, holding accountability, Team members want to be held accountable. They want to be told when they're doing something wrong so that they can correct themselves, so that they can get better. They want to be told when they're doing something right so they can do that more. Your team members want to please you. Focus on the actions that they are performing and the gross will come. If you focus only on the gross, you will always, always be chasing money, you will never feel fulfilled. It will always be that carrot that's dangling in front. This is the carrot. It will always be dangling in front of you all the time and you're the donkey who's always chasing the carrot that's on a stick and you're never gonna chase, you're never gonna get the damn carrot. It's not gonna happen. Friends, focus on the actions and the gross will come. I don't need to say anything more about it. Seriously, like that's the whole thing. Focus on your people, focus on teaching them, training them, coaching them, educating them, empowering them, giving them self-esteem, giving them self-worth, teaching them all those things, teaching because a lot of them don't have anybody who's ever taught them anything in their life. They've just stumbled up to the point the same way that you stumbled up to the point of being at a dealership, the same way that you stumbled into your job, okay? The exact same way, my friends, you were like that one day. Your salespeople, your team members, they are like that today. Focus on teaching them and the gross will come. 100% the gross will come. That's number seven. But look, like they say on the game shows, there's more. Okay, they, we still have more. There is still one point left, the bonus point. The bonus point, mistakes managers make and how to stop them. They stop learning. I kind of touched upon this one earlier in the show, but it's it, it's really, you know, it, it really does deserve to have its own point and it deserves to be spoken about again. Like I had said before, like I said before, managers, we tell our salespeople all the time that they need to learn new things. They need to learn new tactics, okay? But we don't take our own medicine. We don't eat our own dog food when it comes to this type of thing. When I'm talking about learning here specifically, I'm not just talking managers. I'm not just talking about us learning new tactics when it comes to sales. I'm not just talking about us learning like that we should be texting a customer and not calling, that we should be sending a video to each and every single lead. I'm not talking about the things that like, you know, like for example, that things have changed and that we should evolve our sales process and stuff like that. I am talking specifically salespeople. I'm talking specifically managers. I'm talking specifically dealers and how each and every one of us need to constantly be learning about how to be a better leader, about how to learn more and more and more about human emotion and about human behavior, how to continually always be learning about our people 
about our salespeople, about what their history is, about where they come from, about how they grew up, about their family, about what their in what all of their internal wants are, about what is the gas that they are looking to put in their tank that makes them go far and go fast, right? Learning about how we inspire people, how we motivate people, what we need to say, how we need to say it, what we don't need to say, how we can turn these things on and let good information come in here from our people, learning so much, learning the things that we need to learn so that we can really empower people. Here's the killer. Most of us, the huge majority of us, we have all that inside. We have that in us already as managers. It's just transitioning that over, turning it into leadership and having the things that we have inside of us, having them allowed to become out, allowed to come out and flourish so that we can use what the, the goodness that we have inside of us to actually help other people. Managers, you need to constantly be learning how to do that. You need to constantly be learning how to take care of yourself so that you can take care of everybody that's on your team. How to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself first, how in the world can you take care of everybody else? Taking care of yourself is the most selfish thing that you can do for everybody else. Managers, we need to learn self-care. We need to learn self-development. We need to learn self-empowerment, self-esteem, self-confidence. We need to learn those things. And then we also need to learn how to teach them, how to transfer them over to other people, how to transfer them to our salespeople, because that's what your real job is. Not only is it your job, but that's what your real mission is. Your real mission, I said it before in the show and I'm going to say it again, your real mission is to empower and to help everybody that's on your team, to make sure that everybody has what they need mentally, that they have what they need emotionally, that physically they have the things that they need to be able to take care of all the customers. All of that comes from you. You are the beginning and you are the end. You are everything when it comes to your team members and you've got to understand that they are looking up to you. They're looking up to you all the time. And it's a monkey see, monkey do world. If they see you drinking strawberry bangs and Red Bulls and eating Burger King every single day and not taking care of yourself and coming in late and being aggravated all the time. And look, we have empathy for you. I said it in the beginning of the show, being a manager in a car dealership is the hardest, most complicated and most difficult job in the dealership. Okay, but you that means you knowing that, managers, you know that that's true. You got to take care of yourself. You got to do everything that you possibly can to take care of yourself first so that you can take care of everybody else. If you're not taking care of yourself, there's no way that you can empower everybody else. And that, as being a leader, that is what your real mission is. That is what your real purpose is. That's what it's all about. That's what your mission is. That's how you make commission. You take care of everybody else. Salespeople, have some empathy for your managers. Understand where they're coming from. Understand what they go through. Understand that their neck is the first one to be choked and their back is very, very rarely ever, they very rarely ever get a pat on the back, but they always get a hand around the neck, right? That's just the way that they live. Don't feel sorry for them but have empathy and understand that that's where it's coming from. A lot of times if they snap, if they whatever, they're human too. You got to cut them a little bit of slack, all right? But sale, but managers, we got to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of everybody else. Our true mission is to be a leader, a real leader to empower everyone, to make sure that everybody around us realizes that they can do more, not do more like, not like that. I'm talking do more that they can accomplish more. They can learn new things. They can reach new heights. They can really, really learn what their potential is, 
learn how massive it is and constantly be going for it and constantly be going after it. You can be the person that teaches them that, you can be the person that reinforces that, and you can be the person that helps them realize it. Be that manager that, be that manager that your salespeople look at and go, when I'm a manager, that's how I want to be. Instead of them looking at you saying, when I'm a manager, I'm never, ever going to do that. Friends, I love you all so much. I want each and every one of you to realize what I've been saying all night, to realize that your potential is limitless. You cannot be stopped. You are literally unstoppable. The only person that can stop you is you. That's it, nobody else. Managers, make sure that you're always transferring that information, that you're transferring that message to your salespeople. Empower them. Make it so that they constantly realize that there is more that they can do. Make it so their future self thanks them for the hard work that they put in today. And you will be thanking yourself for the hard work that you put in today. I love you all so much. Hit the share button so we get the show out to everybody else. I'll see you tomorrow, 8 p.m. on a re-live. And I'll see you next Monday, 9 p.m. right here for a brand new show. I love you all so much. We'll see you later.